What's up everybody, Mark with Coffee and Toys here, bringing you another weekend news, update, reviews, things I found out in the wild, things I've purchased, and just anything else I feel like talking about, which of course would include coffee. So we'll jump right into today. Today's coffee is Green Mountain Nantucket Blend. It is a medium roast. Uh, it's kind of their probably most famous one. It's just straight down the middle of the road, medium blend, and I like it, and I've always liked it. It's always been a go-to coffee of mine. Again, I'm a monster, I use a Keurig, so it's always been one that's been in my you know top five, always have this coffee. So, to you guys, I hope you are all having a wonderful weekend, and let's just dive right into it. So yeah, um, as far as toy news, it's been, a, it's been a fairly decent week in toy news, so we'll jump right into it. We'll start with G.I. Joe, because I know a lot of you that watch the channel are huge onto G.I. Joe. Of course, this last week, we rounded out Yojo June with three more reveals, and those reveals and pre-orders were for Firefly version 2 in the classified line, but he looks like version 1 from the original toy line 82 to 94. Crimson Viper, another repaint of the Viper. And finally, my personal favorite, Nunchuck. So we'll, we'll talk about each of them, what I think. I've covered them in other uh, videos, but ultimately I'm excited to see Nunchuck because that means we're getting more Ninja Force. At this point we have Storm Shadow, Arctic Storm Shadow, who is really just Ninja Force Storm Shadow, and we have Nunchuck. Um, and I'm excited for this figure because it means we're getting more and more of the Ninja Force figures uh, dropped in the classified line. If you're a younger G.I. Joe collector like I was, or when you were introduced to G.I. Joe, I was on the younger side. I was born in 82, so I think my first, I, I was talking to someone, my first G.I. Joe I actually ever uh, remember having was Deep Six version 2, and I believe that was, uh, oof, 86, 87, 88, somewhere in there, maybe even 89, I don't know. Drop me a comment, tell me where he's at, because... Uh, he was my first G.I. Joe. I remember playing in the tub with him and having him, you know, swim around. So that was my first G.I. Joe. And of course, that was on the tail end of a lot of collecting uh, kids when they were collecting G.I. Joe. And so, yeah, whenever, but Ninja Force, I was hard. Like, I love Ninja Force. I loved all ninjas. I love Ninja Turtles. Uh, my brother played with Power Rangers. Um, so ninjas were always a thing for me. But Ninja Force has a special spot in my heart. And I know it doesn't for a lot of the G.I. Joe collecting community, but I love myself some Ninja Force. Hasbro, I need a Ninja Force Snake Eyes right now. Right now, right this second. I also need Slice and Dice, so if you could just make a three pack of them and ship it off to me right now, that'd be fantastic. But seriously, uh, Ninja Force, uh, Nunchuck rather, he's coming out, Firefly and the Crimson Viper, which was interesting because during the last uh, video that the G.I. Joe team at Hasbro produced, uh, Emily was kind of let it go under the radar, but did mention that the Crimson Viper, they're trying to tell a story and that the Crimson Viper and others will tie into a future set. So the big rumor is right now that they are going to release the Crimson Strike team, which is the Baroness and Tomax and Zayma. And there's also some uh, hidden verbiage. I don't know if it's going to be on the Crimson Bat or the Viper, but I do remember seeing it online. I'll try to put it in the video. Um, about how there's a small subset of Cobra that is exclusively loyal to Tomax and Zaymont and the Baroness. So I tell you what, with your Crimson Bats, your Crimson Vipers, and your Crimson Guards, uh, be on the lookout for that Crimson Strike team if it does materialize. I'd say we'll probably find out very soon. Uh, we're heading straight into San Diego Comic-Con, and of course there's going to be all sorts of exclusives. And let's not also forget the rumored chuckles and armory set so that's another rumor that's out there and i like guys in hawaiian shirts what can i say if that if they are releasing a chuckles i'll make sure to be picking that up as well or you know come hook or crook i will get that figure uh let's see as far as other gi joe news i believe the dragonfly is sitting right around fourteen thousand five hundred backers give or take one way or the other uh, it's really slowed down. I don't think we're going to have any issue getting Glinda unlocked. I think that last day we'll see a massive push. Getting kind of antsy on whether we're going to see the uh, the 19,000 reached. We really is going to depend on that final figure, and I think it's going to be a hard... It would have to be a really hard push if the last day they just unlock Glinda 
to get past that 19,000, depending on what that fi final figure is. Uh, I hope it's I hope it's a home run because I think it's gonna be really hard otherwise to get that 19,000. Not undoable, totally could happen. But currently, if you're sitting at 14 and a half, I mean that's another 4,500 you need to unlock this final figure, and I don't know if there's going to be enough time to push it to that 19k. But we've got you know roughly two weeks to figure it out, so look forward to whatever comes up from that. I'm just happy to be getting a dragonfly with Wild Bill. Which also reminds me that uh, Lenny did release, uh, or Hasbro Pulse, one of the two did release some updated uh, painted versions of the figure so you could actually see what it looks like. Completely painted up now, looks fantastic. They did put some more renders up online, including the Steel Core um, action figure. And wow, that thing looks amazing. Uh, they put it in the front seat of the Dragonfly and they ex explicitly stated that this figure is not included in the Dragonfly HasLab. So don't get your hopes up. Don't think that it's going to be something that's going to be released. It's a mainline release with the two-pack of the Steel Core male and female figures. But it looks amazing. If you've not seen those pictures, I'll make sure to throw some up if I haven't already. Wow, looks great. Uh, I'm going to have to get more of those sets because it looks so, so good. Um... So yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the G.I. Joe news. I can't think of anything that's really been announced. Again, we had a really exciting Yojo June, so thank you to Hasbro and their team for giving us some great figures to look forward to. Uh, moving on, Masters of the Universe, not a whole lot of news this week. Of course, you had until June 30th, uh, last Friday, to pick up the Mondo exclusive uh, Ultimate Skeletor figure which came with those uh, really cool alternate heads, alternate accessories to be able to make basically one figure a three-in-one of uh, classic Skeletor, Battle Armor Skeletor, Dragon Blaster Skeletor, and even Terror Claws Skeletor to a lesser extent. So don't worry if you missed out, it's okay. I'm sure that like He-Man, they will do a regular release in the future that will just come with less accessories and be at a lower price point. But as far as Masters of the Universe, I believe that's all I remember seeing this week. There wasn't really any other reveals, nothing from Target and their, uh, what do they call it? Summer of Collecting, I don't know. But nothing new announced there, so we'll just have to wait and see. We already have a lot of stuff coming, including Snake Mountain. So Snake Mountain is rumored to be dropping in August, so we are one month away from Snake Mountain, which is absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait to have that play set. Uh, just don't know where I'm going to put it. Between Castle Grayskull, Snake Mountain, and then eventually uh, Eternia. Uh, oh, wow. I I don't know. <laughs> I need a bigger room. But that's all I know as far as Masters of the Universe uh, stuff that's coming out. So we'll go ahead and jump on to kind of some, some other news. Indiana Jones, which if you haven't seen the movie yet, I have not seen it. But the movie did drop this last Thursday. Dial of Destiny is out, so Hasbro did a special uh, reveal of their next number of figures coming out, and we are getting, in the 6-inch scale, the Adventure Series 6-inch scale, we are getting Indiana Jones, uh, we're, they're all going to be Last Crusade or Dial of Destiny figures, but we're getting Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade indie, which this indie, uh, none of the figures have removable hats. Uh, which really, or fedoras, which really bothers me. But on this one, they, they went out of the way to talk about during the live stream that they made the fedora movable. So it's on a ball joint and it can slide forwards, backwards, and to the side. And I think that's absolutely crazy. And I'm not sure what I think about it because I really want a removable fedora. But they mentioned that they just couldn't get it right, the fedora on the head, without making the head look... Uh, without making the head too large for the fedora to fit over, or the, sorry, the fedora too large to fit on the head. And maybe, the, in my opinion, they should have taken a play out of what the Joe team is doing at Hasbro and just give a swappable hair. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just a plug, and you could have Indy with his hat on or Indy with his hat off. Now, what's interesting is I was telling this to my, my wife, and I said, yeah, they, they made an articulated hat for Indy. And so you can't take it off. It's just stuck there. And she said, well, didn't didn't Harrison Ford actually staple that thing to his head or something to that effect? I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it was a good point and kind of made me look at the, uh, the non-removable uh, hat 
in a new light. So anyway, Last Crusade, Indiana Jones. Also, uh, Henry Jones Sr., which I am looking forward to picking up because I love Sean Connery and everything about Sean Connery. So he's coming out. We are getting a release of The Grail Knight. That's the other one from The uh, Last Crusade. So we're getting The Grail Knight. Uh, we are getting Elsa as well. And I forgot about that. So we're getting Elsa, The Grail Knight, Indy, and Henry Jones Sr. from The Last Crusade. And then we are also getting two figures from the Dial of Destiny uh, movie, which I can't remember their names, but one's the main bad guy. And I know they said his name and I can't remember the German Nazi dude. And then another guy that is played by Antonio Banderas that I also can't remember his name in the new movie. Probably because I haven't seen the new movie, so I don't really have a frame of reference other than a picture of a toy. But... The point is, all these figures are going to come together to create the uh, the artifact. The build artifact will be the uh, Last Crusades, uh, the final scene in the movie where they actually find the Holy Grail, that where the knight is actually protecting the Holy Grail, and there's all the fake chalices, and it's it's a very nice setup. It's going to have multiple chalices, some fake uh, uh, lantern fires, and it's going to be really cool. So it's another great build an artifact set. And I tell you, I think I think the, that is the one thing that the Hasbro Jones team, or Indiana Jones team rather, is doing very well. These build an artifacts are very fun. Uh, we started with the Ark. The second one was the uh, from Temple of Doom, the Three Stones with the Skull, which I'm currently trying to put together myself right now. And then finally from The Last Crusade, I think it's uh, really cool that we're seeing the Grail set. Um, that'll make some really... Also, Elsa does come with the actual grail. Or no, she comes with the fake grail. The one... I think it's the fake grail. It's not the real one. It's one of the... It's the, it's the bright gold one. The big one that I believe the uh, Donovan in the movie grabs and, you know, it melts him or whatever happens. Uh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen a movie that's 35 years old. Um, so, yeah. Very exciting to see that on the Indiana Jones front. I'm looking forward to seeing that movie. Um... Don't know when I'm going to see it. Hopefully soon. Uh, but we'll see. And let's see. Let's moving on. Uh, in Star Wars news, there was a couple of Black Series announcements this week that were pretty cool. Uh, two Black Series announcements going to be Target exclusives. We have um, Captain Oppo. Gen Captain Oppo, he's uh, a stormtrooper, or sorry, a clone trooper. He was in... Uh, I'm assuming he was in Revenge of the Sith. And, uh, you know, he's the typical clone trooper, blue and white. And, of course, he's just another clone trooper to me because I, I don't know all the different ones. I was focused more on the main characters. But he looks cool. He's a typical clone trooper. He's got great articulation, removable helmet, the whole nine yards. He will be a Target exclusive dropping on July 14th for pre-order. So be on the lookout for that. But, obviously, the big hitter of the two is the battle-damaged Darth Vader from the Kenobi series. Um, I think they call it Final Duel or something like that. I don't know if that's right. Um, but yeah, obviously, the thing, the big selling point about this figure is he has battle damage, and he has the cut down the helmet where you can see Anakin Skywalker's face through Darth Vader's helmet. Very cool. Again, it's going to drop on the 14th of July. It is a Target exclusive, so make sure you're on the lookout for that. I'm definitely going to be picking that figure up because I am a shill for Darth Vader. He's in my top three bad guys of all time. He very well could be number one. I, I don't know. But he is definitely a Black Series character that I will pick up. And as you know, I don't collect a lot of the Black Series myself. So for me to want to go out of the way and pick it up, it must be pretty good. Let's see. As far as other... Um, I know there were some Marvel Legends announcements, but there was nothing that really piqued my, my interest there. So yeah, I guess we'll, we'll jump on to things that I've gotten this week. If you haven't already seen it, uh, this week I did get uh, some more stuff from Hasbro uh, Pulse. Actually, it might have been last week. I did a review this week, we'll say, <laughs> of the Spider-Man and Amazing Friends 3-pack Marvel Legends set. Uh, make sure you check out that review because that was a fantastic set to pick up at 35% off. Uh, looking over here, I did get this in the mail yesterday. The Arctic Bat. I feel like I'm the last person in the world to get this, but I'm super excited to uh, review this figure. So be looking on, looking out for the review of this uh, 
in the upcoming week. And yeah, otherwise I, I, I hit target up yesterday. I saw some of the Indiana Jones six inch figures, um, mostly wave one. And of course they have the target exclusive Indiana Jones OB, Club Obi-Wan figure. They had plenty of him. As far as wrestling figures, um, oh, I guess I can, I can, I can change into that. I did pre-order the re-release of the Ultimate Edition uh, WWE Ultimate Warrior and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So these figures uh, were in like one of the very beginning waves. Actually, I think Warrior was the first wave, the first Ultimate figure they released. And then uh, Stone Cold was a very early on uh, created one as well. These figures will be different than their original releases in the fact that they are using the updated body that are that have pinless joints. I know that for sure, looking at uh, online picture comparisons. So I'm looking at having these two figures in sometime this coming week um, and really looking forward to reviewing them. I think I might have actually had that Warrior once a long time ago when the line first came out, but I, for whatever reason, I got rid of it. So I'm looking forward to having this updated version back into my uh, wrestling figure collection. And so I did get those ordered. I've got the Arctic Bat, the Marvel Legends. I don't really think I have anything else. I'm looking for the McFarland... Uh, DC Universe Batman Nightfall figure. So that's kind of the current figure I am looking for right now. Uh, it should be, if it hasn't already dropped, it should be dropping very soon. I don't think I pre-ordered it, to be honest. And I don't know if it's a Target exclusive or if it's just a all, you know, mass release figure. But I'm looking forward to having that. That figure looks fantastic. I've always been a sucker for the gray and blue Batman suit. So looking forward to finding that figure if I haven't already pre-ordered it. Uh, like I said, I think it's I think it might be available now. If you guys are looking for that figure, drop me a comment. Let me know if you already got it. That'd be be great to speak on it in the comments and let me know what you think of it before I get my little mitts on them. But yeah, I think as far as what I've found out in the wild or purchases this week, not a whole lot, but I am you know looking forward to some stuff. I still have a mountain of figures over here that I need to review. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So always, it's a great time to be a toy collector. And I think uh, the final thing, of course, is that thank you once again that we've hit over 500 subscribers to the channel. And of course, I'm gonna be doing that live stream very soon. As I've mentioned before, I, I wanna do the live stream right now. Like, I wanna just go do it. Uh, unfortunately, I am expecting my second son to be born at any moment. So I, I keep joking that I should just start the live stream because then my son will be born. Uh, my wife will go into labor and then I'll have to shut down the stream and go, sorry guys. Um, so I'm not starting the live stream yet until after my son is born. So it will be a little bit of a delay. There might be some delays in reviews. Uh, he was due yesterday and he's not here yet. He's still hanging out. Um, so we're as soon as he's born and as soon as I can get that part of my life situated. Of course, I will be back. We will run that live stream. I did a short that showcased some of the stuff I'm gonna be giving away subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video while you're down there. Uh, but yeah, gonna be giving away five uh, figures for the giveaway. You have to be a subscriber. So make sure you are subscribed. And then when that live stream uh, finally pops up, be on the lookout for it. I will do a short announcing when the date's going to be so you guys can, you know, mark off your calendar or whatever you need to do if you want to hang out with me. But I also will be giving away stuff during uh, the live stream specifically for the people in the live stream. So if you want a chance to possibly double up on prizes, be a subscriber and join the live stream chat the day it goes live, you could very well win two things. That also means that if you are not a subscriber to this channel and you still want to join the live stream, you do have the opportunity to win something. And I don't care where you live. As long as the U.S. Postal Service will allow me to mail something to you, uh, I'm going to eat the cost. I'm going to send you, if you win something and uh, you are from, I, I had a, a, a fellow say, hey, do, will you ship stuff to India? Absolutely. All you have to be is a subscriber and give me your address, a way to contact you uh, if you win. And yeah, looks fantastic. I will announce the winners on a separate uh, video in case they weren't actively in the uh, live stream at that point. But with that being said, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. My name's Mark. 
This is Coffee with Toys. Have a good weekend. I'll see you later.